Hey, what's going on YouTube? Alabama Reloader here. <clears throat> um, so, today's video, we're going to be talking about the 300 Blackout. Um, I am working on a hunting load for the Hiowa 1500 Mini Action. Um, and we'll be using the Barnes 130 grain tipped TSX bullet. So... Uh, basically, my goal was to have a round, um, develop a round that I could hunt with, hunt deer, hogs, out to about 125 yards, 100, 125 yards, somewhere in that range, um, you know, and it'd be effective with the Barnes bullet. The, the issue, if you go and look, there's God knows how many gel test review videos on YouTube about the Barnes, um, you know, tip TSX bullets and everything and how they just mushroom beautifully and they look amazing and all that. Um, well, the problem is you, you've got to really be pushing some decent, you know, velocities to achieve those results. Well, in the 300 blackout, you know, we've got a 16 inch barrel, I think 16 and a quarter inch barrel on the Howa 1500 mini action. So, uh, we've got to really push with the 130 grain, we've got to really push uh, max charge basically in the three powders that I chose I, I went with a max charge in all three um, to try to achieve the velocity numbers my my goal was to have an average of at a minimum 2,000 feet per second at the muzzle um, and that would basically deliver us you know some pretty good energy down down range at 100 yards you know good energy uh, still maintain uh, good enough velocity uh, to where I felt like it would be, a, a, you know, turn it into a, a very effective hunting bullet uh, for deer, hogs, that type of stuff. So pretty much, and, and you're going to see a video that's going to follow this one where it's the first sort of, um, I guess, range live shooting uh, style video that I've ever done and the way I was able to achieve that and I actually go over it in another video um, Is this guy? So just sort of a side note this thing I bought this on Amazon. It was 22 bucks and pretty much what I did I Attached it to my Athlon optics Talos uh, Talos or whatever spotting scope. So right here you just Stick it right on the eyepiece tighten it down or more like that tighten it down and then this piece right here you can open up to fit your phone and then you just adjust you know so you can take video through the uh through the spotting scope is the way i did it and so the video quality isn't that great um but you get the idea you're able to kind of uh, it's a 30 minute long video i believe but within those 30 minutes i took 30 shots so it's three 10 shot groups uh, we weren't um, overly concerned with the accuracy of each group. Uh, I was using a magneto speed chronograph um, to capture all the velocity data. So shout out to Matt over at Mr. Big Guns in Huntsville. He he let me borrow the the magneto speed V3. Uh, I've always used a Caldwell G2 Precision chronograph. I, I'll go ahead and tell you I like the magneto speed way better, uh, even though it you have a point of impact shift. Um, because you're hanging something off the end of your barrel, which changes the harmonics and all that fun stuff that you can dive off into if you want to. Uh, but just leave it to say that it changes point of impact. And it did in, in this particular case, um, as you'll see in the video, because right there. So that was a load um, that I'd shot in the same rifle. So we were, we were zeroed for that particular load using CFE uh, BLK, you know, whatever, CFE black. And all I did was change powders. And you'll see in the video, this was the first sh group I shot actually. And I was aiming at this, at this target. And so we were off, I think about five inches or so, give or take. Um, so I just made a scope adjustment and then we were good from there. But yeah, 
So the goal was 2,000 feet per second at the muzzle, uh, slightly higher if possible it is great. Um, the three powders that I went with, uh, CFE BLK or CFE Black, however you want to call that, Hodgson Low Gun, and Ramshot Enforcer. Yeah. Um, so real quick, obviously just looking at it, Looking at the three groups, uh, CFE Black group the best, 1.86 inches for the 10 shot group. Um, Hodgson and Little Gun, we're not even gonna fool with that because we didn't even meet our velocity requirements, 2,000 feet per second. That was with the max charge. Uh, we could extend our overall length if we wanted to um, and throw a little more powder in there and try to um, achieve some higher velocities, you know, that wasn't a compressed load. We could compress things and do all that sort of fun stuff if we, if we really wanted to. Uh, standard deviation was just garbage. So we're not even gonna fool with that. Not when we have, you know, better results in terms of group size and velocity data from the other two powders we tried. So pretty good stuff here from CFE Black. Um, average was 2040, standard deviation 12.5, and the best group out of the three. Again, group size wasn't the critical factor. Uh, we were going for strictly velocity data, and if it grouped well, that was just kind of a bonus. Um, Ramshot Enforcer, so 2033 on the velocity data, standard deviation 6.5, group size pretty bad. Um, again, not something we were overly concerned with. So just sort of looking at the three targets, um, or the three groups, you know, like I said, we're going to throw out a little gun right off the bat. We're not going to fool with it. Um, we may continue to explore the CFE black. Uh, the only reason I want to fool with Ramshot Enforcer, uh, more than CFE black, a couple of things. So our velocity was about the same. This was a 22 grain load and it was heavily compressed. That was a very compressed load. Um, and my overall length was at 2.260. And we were we were compressed to the point where we had a little bit of bullet deformation on the uh, around around the bullet from the seating stem. So I mean it, it was compressed uh, by a decent amount. And that that gave us our velocity numbers. Um, but we can't really grow a whole lot more on our overall length because then we run into magazine issues. So we don't have a whole lot of room to actually work on this load. Um, so there's just, at, basically this is kind of like max scenario. This is just not a lot of wiggle room or things you can adjust on this load. Uh, it did group the best and it did hit our velocity number, but um, just not a lot we can, we can change or adjust in this particular load to try to dial, you know, dial in better results, right? We're kind of already there. Uh, but with this one, you know, our overall length is 2.1. So we've got another 160 thousandths before we even catch up to the CFE black load. Uh, we've got 160 thousandths we could play with and a little bit more um, once we go to mag capacity, magazine length. Um, we can actually stretch it just a little bit past that. But so we've got plenty of room to work with on overall length. We've already hit our velocity numbers of, you know, over 2000 feet per second, and it had the best standard deviation. That's pretty good. 6.5 single digit standard deviation, very good. Um, so that's why I really wanna explore this some more, uh, stretch that overall length, maybe get a little more powder um, in the case, see, when we start to see some pressure, uh, signs of pressure, start to see some issues, but I, I really want to focus on this load. Um, maybe go back, load up some five shot groups with the 16 grain charge and then stretch out our overall length. Uh, see what that does to our group, see what that does to our velocity data and all that. So that's really where we're at uh, with the 300 blackout. So uh, just, Stay tuned, there's gonna be a follow-up video to this. It'll be the 30 minute video of me out there shooting. So we're gonna work on this load and that's the reason why really good velocity numbers. 
uh, in terms of SD and it met our threshold. So now we can tweak that overall length, see what we can do about tightening this up, possibly add a little more powder in the case along the way, who knows. So but that's it. Uh, Y'all stay tuned. I was finally able to get out to the range and get some more footage and things uh, done, some more shooting done. So there'll be some more videos uh, to follow. So we'll catch y'all next time. Y'all have a good one.